Some people, some people are driven crazy by their mistakes. Maybe I'm one of them. Sometimes a mistake just slips through the cracks. The worst mistake of all, Alfred Sabinelli lied to me. You decided that you wanted to write a pamphlet about it under a pseudonym. It's such a bizarre <laughs> lie. You lied to me on television. You know, there's not really instructions on this sort of stuff. I've learned some really good techniques. In 2017, I solved one of the greatest mysteries in ethnoherpetological history, centered around Bufo alvarius, the only species of toad known to produce a powerful tryptamine called 5-MeO-DMT. Now one of the most coveted psychedelics internationally, the growing demand has inspired roving bands of toad milkers to scour the Sonoran Desert in search of a venom more valuable than gold. Once dried, the venom is smoked to provide entry into a numinous realm of boundless white light. Love. Yes, you can make a cookie with love. But the smoking of this venom has a humble origin that can be traced to a single pamphlet called Bufo Alvarius, the Psychedelic Toad of the Sonoran Desert. Written in 1983, the pamphlet is a work of extraordinary erudition that seemingly emerged out of nowhere. It describes everything from the venom's chemical composition to its qualitative effects when smoked, in addition to techniques for locating and milking the toad. Without a history of human use, the identity of the author becomes even more intriguing. Who could have written this guide? And who would have taken the incredible risk of smoking the venom with nothing but evidence of its toxicity? Who is Albert Most? After interviewing several claimants to the Almost name, my evidence led me to a toad specialist and incense entrepreneur, Savinelli, who reluctantly acknowledged his authorship of the pamphlet. He published his pamphlet in 1983. Yes. He's lying. Do you tell me how you got to the point that you were investigating toad venom? Sure. It began by me gathering river toads, expressing the venom onto cigarettes and smoking it. And I propagated a lie. I noticed that you dedicated the pamphlet that you authored to Pat and Quana. Is that Quana Parker that you were? And who's Pat? Pat was his wife. Okay. Quana Parker had eight wives, and not a single one of them was named Pat. I could have looked that up. After the episode was released, thoughtful viewers were quick to offer constructive criticism. I knew there were unusual things about him. He didn't live in Denton, Texas, where the pamphlet was published. He didn't have any of the original pamphlets, any of the original artwork, any of the original t-shirts, also a red flag. Was it modesty or dishonesty? I called one more time to set the story straight. Why was Venom Press based in Denton, Texas? Are you living in Texas at some point? I want to make sure everything is factually correct, that you are Albert Most. Uh, almost, that's almost correct. Hamilton, let me get back to you, okay? I was duped. It was my responsibility to evaluate the truth of his claims. Hey, Hamilton. I heard you were looking for Albert Most. Perhaps I can help you fill in the missing pieces of your puzzle. I am Albert Most. I wrote about the toad. I smoked the toad venom. I am Albert Most. Let's talk sometime. Ken, Denton, Texas. When I received a letter from a provocative new Almost claimant, I could resume my investigation, this time revolving around a secretive Texan named Ken Nelson. A psychedelic researcher and committed environmentalist, Ken was an unlikely recruit, but he joined the military in order to learn tactics to inform his anti-nuclear protests. Fascinated by the possibility of a psychedelic toad, he immersed himself in scientific literature and traveled to Gila, Arizona to locate Bufo alvarius, but found nothing as the toads were still estivating in their subterranean refugia. Undeterred, he returned during the monsoon season of 1983 in his Chevy sport van with a collie named Quana and his then girlfriend, Pat. When Quana spotted a toad near their campsite, Ken leapt into action. He squirted the venom onto the windshield of his sport van, dried it, smoked it, 
and had the first known experience with venom of the psychedelic toad of the Sonoran Desert. In his pamphlet, Ken described the experience as being completely absorbed in a complex chemical event, characterized by an overload of thoughts and perception, brief collapse of the ego, and a loss of the space-time continuum. He returned to Denton, Texas, where he became a resident advisor and enrolled in a technical writing class to help publish the results of his research. The product was a new religion, a series of t-shirts, a specialized toad venom smoking pipe, five methoxy DMT matches, and a small pamphlet that would forever change ethno-herpetological history. I was first in science, when you scoop everybody, you beat them to the punch. So once I realized what I had, it was a big deal. And uh, smoke it. <laughs> After I had met his friends and come to have a more complete understanding of his research, the real Albert Most, Ken Nelson, invited me to visit him in his assisted living facility. Parkinson's disease had taken Ken's strength but he still had the energy to discuss his discovery that changed the world. Hey, Hamilton. Hello. It's really a pleasure to meet you. Good meeting you. This is my example of a psychedelic toad, by the way. I researched it. I knew what I had, I knew what it was. It's Colorado River Toad. It's unique. It's got glands on its back legs, arms, shoulders, and then a really big gland on the parotid. I harvested them and smoked it. I was first. And what is the experience like when you smoke Ufwell various? It's, it's, it's overwhelming. You want to hold your breath as long as possible and take it all in one hit. It kind of comes over you like a white light. And you weren't afraid? No. It's a trip, that's the experience right there. That opened the door for a lot of stuff. I suppose the average person wasn't exposed to. The toads are now threatened in their natural environment that climate change and over-harvesting of their venom may have caused a decline in the natural population. When you were done with the, the first toad that you ever milked, did you release it back into the wild? Oh yeah, I didn't keep them. I put Aesop's Fables in my book. Instead of trying to say, don't do it, I put in Aesop's Fables. Read out of that if you want. I really appreciate that you're telling me all of this. It's a good story. It's a great story. It's an amazing story. Was this a wrap? This is a wrap for now, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>